Hi, this is Sam Botstein. Make sure to check out TractorSkills.com and subscribe to us on YouTube for all our tractor tutorials. Today we're going to take a look at how to bring our work in Machine, or another sequencer, into the remix sets in Tractor. Now one of the really cool things about the remix sets is that you can have as much or as little as you want in them. You could have individual drum sounds or just one shots like an air horn, or you could have sort of an Ableton Live style thing going where you trigger different clips and move between them using different effects and the fader and filter for each individual column. Now the basic idea of what we're going to do here is we're going to take a group of 16 sounds in machine with 16 patterns and get it ready to be sliced up into a bunch of different scenes which will basically serve as each of our rows here and we're going to actually take advantage of the full remix deck in that there are four rows per page and uh, four pages for a total of 16 rows, and we're going to essentially mute or rather solo four sounds at a time in order to give us the full pattern across an entire remix deck. So let's hop into machine and do that. I'm going to choose a group that everyone has in order to do this. I am 79% sure that this Bionic kit is part of the machine 2.0 library, so you can follow along at home. Now it's pretty simple to actually populate out 16 scenes full of the 16 different patterns that this particular uh, pattern loads with. If it didn't load with the pattern, you should turn on this. Or if you're browsing on your machine controller, you can turn that off by pressing the plus pat button, which is the uh, second to the right above the machine screens. Now, you can move really quickly in terms of building this out by pressing scene and then the next pad and then pattern and that same pad and then scene again to the next pad and pattern the same pad and it's a pretty fast workflow and uh, pretty quickly we have all 16 patterns out so when we select all of the scenes We actually have our song all planned out, and what we're going to do from here is actually export the audio, but having muted different parts of the whole group. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to solo this first kick, then we're going to grab this other kick as well, as well as the third one, which is on pad 14. And I think that we're also gonna grab this knock at the bottom here. This seems like a pretty good start, and it's four sounds. Remember, there are 16, so if we export four on average, we're on track. So we're just gonna grab export audio, actually have a specific folder uh, planned out for this, and here we can actually use the master output. If we did this some other way, we would choose either the group or sounds outputs. Uh, it is a little bit more work. You would have to copy out all those patterns again. So what we're just gonna do is hit export. It should go pretty quickly. Now we're going to choose four different sounds. So we're done with this kick. Let's export the snare along with the claps. And I think that this click is something that we would want to uh, export as well. So it looks like those four sounds go together pretty well. We're just going to choose File, Export Audio, and repeat the process. Next, we're going to solo these hats. There are three of them. Well, let's go ahead and export that. Next, we'll export everything else. So we'll take everything that we haven't heard so far, like these toms, this distortion, and the blop, and export these things. So that brings us to the full 16 sounds on four individual files. 
So on that specific folder I've created just for this, we have all of the things that we were looking for. And over in Ableton, let's get started with this. So we definitely want to change the transport to be 120. We're going to switch right to uh, the arrangement mode. We're not going to mess with the session view at all. Now we're going to look back at that folder we made and we're going to import all of the sounds that we have exported. Now by default, it lines them all up one after another like this. If you hold down command, they'll put them on individual tracks. And you'll notice that our transport uh, changed. Let's go back to 120. And you'll notice that sometimes it doesn't detect everything quite right. If you're not using Ableton, you're using some other DAW, this might be a little bit different. But the idea is we just really want everything to sound just the way it did in the machine before we cut it up. So here's what the beginning sounds like. And here's what it was like a machine. So let's just A, B that, let's compare. Sounds pretty good to me. So what we're going to do is we're gonna cut these up by bar. Basically what we want to do is go ahead and in order to do this as fast as possible, just change our fixed grid to one bar and then all you really need to do is make sure that uh, this cursor goes all the way through. But before we do this, let's actually just rename these. So let's just call this the kick. There's a reason to do this that you'll see in just a minute. This looks like the snare. So this seems to be the snare to me. Let's rename the snare. Then we wanna grab the hats, which is this one. And finally, everything else. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our transport goes through all four tracks and press Command E to split them up. And then with our grid set to just one bar, all we need to do to travel to the next pattern is to just press the right arrow, you can alternate between the right arrow and command E all the way through to the end. And now all we need to do is do command A to select everything and then right click and then crop clips. So it'll take Ableton a second to do that, and then once we've done that, we can actually click Show in Finder. And then see all of our cropped clips. They end up in this folder called Crop, which uh, should really basically have everything that we need. So let's go ahead and make a new folder, copy everything into a new folder, and then we'll get a, rid of all of these Ableton files uh, really quickly. All we need to do is look for ASD in that folder and uh, just delete them all. So now we should just only have our cropped up sounds. They're all these even little loops. And what we're going to do is we're going to look back at Tractor finally and just drop them in. So what we want to do is grab all of our else stuff here, starting with the first one. And just grab all of the rest and put them into Tractor. And you'll see that it actually knew more or less what we wanted and just filled up the whole row with these guys. Let's go and repeat this process for the hats. Now, the naming scheme that we got from Ableton's cropping puts the original name first, and then uh, the one labeled with the one would be two. So it's sort of like zero. It's sort of like it was zero indexed. If uh, you're a computer guy, you'll understand what that's all about. Now, I, I, I like to always put the kick on the left, but that is totally up to you. You can do whatever you want. You could have soloed different sounds if you wanted. Find the system that works best for you and uh, stick with it. 
become the best you can with the system that you chose and uh, try to master it. Become a virtuoso of your own remix deck system. Okay, so this has worked out pretty well so far. What I would recommend doing now is saving your remix set. You can do this by clicking on deck C or whatever deck you have your remix set on and going to save remix set. I've already saved mine, so I'm actually going to overwrite the one I had. So one th thing that we have going on here is that all of our samples are one shots right now. So they just play and end. What we actually want is for them to be loops. So if you have your remix set in advanced mode, if you don't, you can double click until you get there or you can hop into the preferences by pressing the little gear icon and then looking at your decks layout and then you could see advanced for the remix decks. Once you have that all selected, you're actually able to change these by pressing this little button which moves you between loops and one-shots. Uh, or on your Control F1, what you can do is you can hold down, sorry, you can just press type, then scroll until it says PL. And then you can see in real time, as I press these pads down and turn green, their little icons change to the loop icon. Now I'm gonna go through and do this on all four different pages. So I'm gonna move the page two and change these all to be loops, page three, and finally page four. So we're evergreen. Basically all of our things are loops now. So this is very cool. We're able to build a groove by mixing in a pattern one piece at a time. This is an excellent start. We also have the ability to move between patterns in entirety, or we can move between them one column at a time. We also have a lot of flexibility through the filters on all four tracks. Notice that we don't get a full kill in either direction. These are simple uh, state variable DSP filters, but there are a lot of nice sweet spots. So now that you've made these changes, Go ahead and save your remix set again. I'm going to overwrite mine. And in a future tutorial, we're going to look at some different performance techniques using this very remix deck.